Welcome. The question I'm going to pose to you now is this one. What is the origin of the computer? I think before we can answer that question, we need to take a, a step back, a holistic look at where the computer fits within the world in which we live. So I'm focusing really on the digital computer here. This is the modern version of a computer, but we'll, we'll think about where the term computers come from in a second. On the left-hand side, we've got the world in which we live in, the world that we inhabit, which is termed the analog world. The analog world. The analog world is the world of continually varying values. Computers inhabit a different world than that. They inhabit the digital world. So the digital world is the world of discrete values, the digital world. Um, things in the analog world generate data at a phenomenal rate and that data passes from the analog world into the digital world through a couple of main routes. First of all through automatic sensors and secondly through manual input devices usually from humans, not necessarily. There has to be some sort of interface between the analog world here and the digital world and the interface sits logically at that position. To convert these analog signals into digital signals for the computer to use we need to use the following item which is called an analog to digital converter. I'll repeat that, an analog to digital converter. The analog to digital converter takes analog signals, converts them to digital signals in some way and then passes them to the digital computer. Now hopefully the digital computer will process that digital data in some way to produce some meaningful output that we can use. During that process the digital computer may need to store values temporarily or permanently in some sort of storage area. Once the processing has been done and some suitable output has been generated then that data can pass through another converter at the interface which does the opposite job called a digital to analog converter, I'll repeat that, a digital to analog converter and produces meaningful output in the form of images, sound, um, movement maybe through a manual output device or through some sort of automatic actuator back into the analog world. So that's kind of where the computer, the digital computer and the, and the analog world interface together. Let's take a look at the two main components of all computer systems. So I've drawn, well I've got two simple diagrams here. On the left hand side first of all is what is termed hardware. Hardware, hardware is literally things you can touch metal, plastic, glass, and so on. On the right hand side, and it's difficult to show this really, is some computer code that's been written, which is an example of software. Software. There's nothing particularly soft about it, it's only called software to distinguish it from hardware. Software literally are the instructions the instructions to perform a task. Okay, you could refer to that as code over here. Okay, you could refer to that as code or a program. And crucially, the software is designed to run on the hardware. So the other way of explaining that is that the hardware executes the instructions written in software. It's not always been that way. The earliest computers didn't have software. They were programmed, physically programmed, and even some microcontrollers these days are physically programmed to do a particular job, and you can't alter that, but that's for another video, I would have thought. So, stepping back, we're moving back in time now to round about um, 1613, and in around about 1613, this person here, who is called R.B. Gent, wrote the following passage in a book. 
I have read the truest computer of times, and the best arithmetician that ever breathed, and he reduceth thy days into a short number. This is the first ever written example of existence of the term computer, and it was in 1613, way, way, way before digital computers were ever even conceived. Uh, it, it, these days, the term computer literally meant one who computes or calculates. That's who a computer was, rather than what a computer was, and they were humans, generally. Okay, I don't know who else they'd be. And predominantly female. So, hats off to all the female computers of old, uh, without which we certainly wouldn't be anywhere near as uh, sophisticated as we are in the world in which we live. Now, what sorts of things did these people compute? All right, well, let's have a quick think about that. Um, uh, uh, um, astronomy was a, was a massively influential area in, in, in this at this time in history. So, a lot of work was actually done on calculating comet trajectories um, and predicting when comets would return so that we could uh, gain a better understanding of the sort of the universe. Sea travel was massively influential as well so a lot of work was done by human computers on tide predictions and also on the weather and the way in which we could try in, in the best we could to predict the way that weather patterns would develop. Obviously, mathematics, so maths, lots of calculations done on maths tables, lookup tables for logarithms and um, uh, uh, trigonometric functions and so on. And, and, and to be honest, this was the area that drove the development of the digital computer, warfare. Warfare is, you know, the reason why, I spoke warfare wrong, is the reason why computer digital computers themselves were were developed to be honest so you know we'll um, we'll part that one for another video as well however human computers had their disadvantages you know I'm not being critical about them because this is just the way that things are they were grossly error prone um, especially when they got tired so they made lots of mistakes the work itself was incredibly tedious the same calculations, no, even though they were simple, the same calculations day in, day out. Also very expensive when, you, when you're actually employing somebody to work for you, uh, it's, you know, it's, it's very expensive and you don't get a 100% of the time, you don't get 100% of the work out of them, you know, people need a break and they need lunch and they need to go to the toilet and everything else. And crucially, crucially, very slow as well. Okay, so very slow. So, the time came when this was causing some massive issues and it wasn't good enough anymore just to have human computers. This kind of happened around 1940, around about World War II, in the time of World War II. And again, forgive me for, for missing out the, the thousands of computer scientists that were influential in the development of digital computers. Um, there's, there's no way I could, you know, I could mention all of them for sure. But let's think about some of the most influential players. And I've tried to um, represent them here and I'll, I'll try and explain what, what their impact was in the development of these digital computers, these automatic computing devices here. On the left hand side you may recognise this this chap, he's called Alan Turing and Alan Turing was instrumental in the development of a, well it was really an analogue computer I suppose called the BOM it wasn't. It was digital in some ways. It, it used digits, um, but it was it was wasn't particularly discrete digits. Called the bomb. Didn't use any electronic components, and I think that's the crucial thing about this. Any electronic switches or valves. Okay. Well, again, probably another video. This chap's called Tommy Flowers, and Tommy Flowers was the designer of a arguably the first digital computer. Although some people think it was the ENIAC, but arguably the first digital computer called the Colossus, the Colossus, and the Colossus computer was actually designed to break the Lorenz code which the German high command used to communicate with the troops. The bomb was used to crack the Enigma code um, because, mainly because the bomb being a machine was less likely to make mistakes, um, didn't mind working all hours 
um, was expensive, but not massively expensive to run. But I, but but most importantly, it was not as slow as humans. Um, if you've ever watched, there's a film called the um, the Imitation Game. Well worth a watch if you haven't seen it, which explains the whole story behind the development of that of that computer. Fabulous film. Now, apart from those, this is the British end of things, and the American end of things, the American army was, was developing computer systems mainly to calculate the trajectories of bombs, to predict where bombs would fall when they were fired from guns or dropped from aircraft. Um, and they developed digital computers, and the first people, programmable digital computers, and the first people that programmed those computers were all women. And I've tried to draw six of those, the most influential of those women here, um, We've got basically, first of all, Francis Holberton over here. So I'm just going to write the first names. So Francis Holberton over there. This is Francis Spence, second one. So two Francises. Uh, we've got Jean Bartik, who's just there. And Kathleen Antonelli. You have to be careful how I pronounce the name. Next in line. Uh, Marlin Meltzer. Oops, that's a Y. And um, finally, last but my name is least, uh, Ruth Teitelbaum, who's over here. Now those are class. Those those women there are classed as they worked for the U.S. Army. Okay, so they worked for the U.S. Army, and they are classed as the first programmers. And guess what? And this is why we need to make a big thing of this. They were female as well. They all very highly qualified um, mathematicians, and um, they were responsible for writing the first digital computer programs. You know, we're not going to dive into that conversation about about the first computer program at Ada Lovelace. You know, we could have another video about that. I'm sure. Gosh, lots of videos coming up, aren't there, about this? Right. So basically, what were the advantages of the digital computer systems that these people developed? Well. As you can imagine, the opposite of the um, the human computer system. So these are automatic, automatic computing devices that were developed. Had various advantages. Devices. Just throw a capital E in the middle of that. First of all, they were very accurate. As long as they were designed properly and coded and programmed properly, they were very accurate. They were very speedy and fast, okay? So they did their jobs much quicker. They were initially very expensive to develop, but in the long term um, provided massive cost savings. Again, we could argue about the impact of technology on the workplace. Um, oh, guess what? Uh, another video. And also, interestingly, um, fostered creativity. Once people realised that digital computers could be programmed to do different jobs, the creativity, the creative side of problem solving kind of became important. So, hopefully we've answered the question. Well, let's just review where we were at the beginning. What was the origin of the computer? Computers were once human, but are now automatic data processing devices. 